Welcome to Maths TV. Today we will be going through IGCSE Maths Paper 4-3, October November 2018. Today we will be going through Mathematics uh, IGCSE Paper 4 at Standard 0580-443, October November 2018. Question number one, which is transformation question, and this triangle T and P is given, and part one is describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle T on to P. So T on to P. T is this one, P is this one. So we have to check the transformation and describe it fully. So for that one, if we see, this is basically a reflection uh, about this line. If we check from here, this is one, two, three units and one, two, three units. So this is the line of reflection. We can draw line of reflection like this. So this will be line of reflection, which is y is equal to minus one. So our answer will be its reflection, reflection, and y is equal to minus 1. Then second part, translate triangle T uh, by vector minus 2 and minus 5. So minus 2, this point we will be checking. Minus 2 will be left, 2 units left. And minus 5 means two, 5 units down. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 units. So this point will move to this one. And the rest of the points we can count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So this will be the other point. And 2 units above. So this will be 2 units. This one. So now we can draw this triangle. And this will be the translated triangle which will be this this is the final line which we can draw from here this one and we can even shade this triangle for your understanding i'm shading this one so this one This is uh, second part done. Then they are saying third part. Rotate triangle T through 90 degree anti-clockwise about origin. Anti-clockwise 90 degree about origin. So we'll take tracing help. So this will be the tracing which we'll be using. And uh, we can trace the coordinate axis. And this is the this is y axis. And then we can trace the triangle as well. Um, this is the triangle which we have traced. Now, about the origin, anti-clockwise 90 degree. About origin, anti-clockwise 90 degree will be completed over here. Now we can make uh, these points also. So this is... Uh, 90 degree about origin and now we can move this this will be this point this point and and this point fourth one will be this one right so we can join these basically we can join this with this and this one with this one and last will be this joining and we got this triangle this one then comes uh, next part they are saying enlarge triangle t by scale factor minus one by two and the center is zero zero so what we will do we will be enlarging this one to enlarge this one 
and center is zero zero so all lines will be passing through zero zero so i'll be moving this page like this so that we can draw properly this will be a line will be from this point like this one and then we can draw from here also and this will be line from this point up to this one and third line we can draw from this point and passing through the origin so this will be our third line then one by two uh, scale factor minus one by two minus one by two mean it will be on this side of the origin and this height is one so it will be having height this height is two so this will be having height as one because it will be divided by two and this side is four so this will be reducing to two so from here this will be you can see this one so this will be trying from here it will be if i draw with the scale so this will be one unit this one this is the perpendicular side and this will be two units up to this one this base so our base will be this one and hypotenuse will be hypotenuse of the triangle will be this one so we can shade this this will be half of the uh, by scale factor minus one by two this will be by scale factor minus one by two if you compare this triangle with this one base is two in this case base is one two three four hypotenuse is two this high uh, sorry perpendicular is two in this case perpendicular is one so two divided by one two divided by two will be one so and if you check this uh, what do you call hypotenuse this is also uh, covering one two three four units but this is within two units so everything is reduced to half so this is question one is done one question one b part this is uh, um, a drawing is given basically x is ox and y find the column vector a b we have to find the column vector a b so a, we have coordinates of ab so ab to find ab what we will do we'll subtract 5 minus we will take, take first b so 5 x coordinate of b minus x coordinate of a 5 minus 3 and 6 minus 2 so 6 minus 2 y coordinates right so this will be equal to 2 and 4 so this will be our answer 2 and 4 then they're saying a b mod a b mod will be 5 minus 3 same thing this one square and root 4 minus 3 square plus 6 minus 2 squared and this root will be equal to a b mod so we can use calculator for this and this will be equal to 5 minus 3 is basically 2 so this one 2 plus 2 square plus this will be 4 square under root so we can write mentally like for example this will be 4 4 plus 16 will be 20 20 under root and 20 under root means what under root 20 will be equal to uh, 4.47 so we can write our answer as uh, 4.47 and part 3 b is the midpoint of line ac A, this point b is midpoint of line ac find the coordinates of ac so what we will do we will extend this we will draw this line like for example from here 
a b and c will be like in this line like for example we can suppose that c is over here like roughly so we can now find the coordinates of c i've uh, this is the C point which we have taken. So coordinates of C we can suppose as X and Y and this will be the midpoint of A and C. So we can apply midpoint formula and we can write here X plus 3 which is coordinates of C and A. X plus 3 by 2 and Y plus 2 by 2. This will be the coordinates of the midpoint which is x plus c divided by 2 and y plus 2 divided by 2. So this will be equal to the midpoint which is 5 and 6. So we can write 5 and 6. So from this equation we can write x plus 3 and divided by 2 is equal to 5. This is equal to 5. It, it means x um, is equal to this is 10 so this is equal to 10 minus 3 which is equal to 7 so x value will be 7 and y plus 2 over 2 is equal to 6 so this implies y um, is equal to 12 minus 2 12 minus 2 which is equal to 10 so we can write here 10 find the equation of the straight line that passes through the point a b we have two points a b we can find the gradient m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is the gradient formula so we can write here um, 6 minus 2 6 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 3 this will be equal to 4 over 2 which is equal to 2 so gradient is 2 and point we can use any of these given points like for example uh, I'm using this point uh, 5 and 6 so we can write y minus y1 which is 6 is equal to gradient which is 2 m into x minus x1 which is 5 so this one now we can open the brackets y minus 6 is equal to 2x minus 10 2x minus 10 so this 6 will be sent to the other side. y is equal to 2x minus 10 plus 6. So this will be equal to 2x plus 4. Uh, 2x minus 4 basically, not plus 4. So I will change this to 2x minus 4. And our answer will be y is equal to 2x minus 4. Hopefully you are getting, you are understanding everything. Then part 5, the straight line that passes through A and B cuts the y-axis at D, right on the coordinates of D. D is basically the y-intercept and you we know this is minus 4. So we can, um, uh, we can write here minus 4 and x-coordinate on y-axis is 0. So we can write 0 and minus 4. Now this is question number two a school has 240 students the ratio of girls to boys is 25 and 30, 23 25 and 23 girls to boys shows the that the number of boys is 115 so what we can do we can first find the sum of ratios 25 plus 23 is equal to 48 and then we can um, we can calculate 23 are the boys so 23 divided by uh, 23 divided by this one 23 out of 48 this one and multiply by total strength which is 240 will be equal to we can calculate this uh, 23 over uh, 48 multiplied by 240 this will be equal to 115 so 115 which we have which were we were supposed to prove second part one day there are 15 girls and 15 boys absent find the ratio girls to boys in the school 
on this day give your answer in simplest form so boys present were how many 115 minus minus 10 so uh, basically there were uh, one day there were 15 girls absent and 20 boys uh, sorry 15 boys absent so out of uh, um, boys so 15 were absent so 115 minus 15 will be equal to 100 so remaining these are 100 girls present or uh, girls present we can write this one as 240 240 or the total and minus 115 which is equal to 125 and out of 125 15 are absent so 110 were present so ratio will be 110 for the girls and 100 and uh, 100 sorry 100 for boys so we can divide this by uh, 10 so this will be this will zero we can cancel so simplified ratio will be 11 ratio 10 this 11 ratio 10 will be our answer now third part next year the number of students will increase by 15% calculate the number of students next year so this is increment basically Uh, so two forty are the students present, and increment will be one plus fifteen over hundred, and for one year, so it will be raised to the power one. So we can calculate two forty into one plus fifteen over hundred, and this will be equal to two seventy six. So our answer will be two seventy. six over here since the school was opened the number of students has increased by 60% there are now 240 students calculate the number of students when the school was opened now this is 60% increment increase so we don't know the original uh, number of students so this is a reverse percentage question in reverse percentage question we are taking original amount as x and 160 why 160 because the 60% increment so this will be 160 over 100 so this will be this is equal to now present is uh, present number is 240 so x will be equal to 240 multiply by 100 divided by 160 and this will be simplified to 100 over 160 this will be equal to 150 so at the start of the school it was only 150 students part b the population of a city is increasing exponentially at a rate of 2% each year 2% each year the population now is this one So calculate the population after thirty years. So a will be equal to two five six triple zero. This is the population, and exponential increase by two percent, and for thirty years, and we'll apply the formula. So this will be two five six triple zero, and into one plus two divided by hundred. And raised to the power will be thirty, and this is equal to this much. So this will be equal to four six three seven zero eight point five six five five, and we can round it to because we have to round to the nearest thousand. So one stands hundred, and this is the thousand. So this will be seven will be removed, and this will be instead of three, we'll write four. So answer will be four six four zero zero zero. A bacteria population increases 
um, exponentially at a rate of r degrees after 32 days the population has increased by 309 percent so value of r we have to calculate so a is equal to p into 1 plus r over 100 this is the formula of exponential increase we will be applying so a is equal to 309 plus 100 because this is increment so 409 is equal to 1 it's starting from 1 1 into 1 plus r 1 plus r over 100 and raised to the power t will be 32 now we have to move the page also so that you can see clearly okay now this one we will be shifting this first we will take this uh, root which is uh, root we will take over here 409 and this 32 will be over and then this will be 1 plus r over 100 and then we can shift 1 so this will be 32 and 409 minus 1 and this is equal to r over 100 100 also we can shift to this side so it will be 100 multiply by 32 over here and 409 and minus 1 this minus 1 is outside the cube uh, this one outside the root and r now we can calculate this Mm, hundred multiply by uh, this one we'll be using and this is 32 over here and four mm, zero nine and minus one and bracket close so this will be equal to uh, 20 point 20.67 basically we have done mistake over here it was 309 percent so we have to divide this by 100 also and if we divide this by 100 this will be 4.09 and this will be 4.09 and this one also 4.09 so we can change this as 4.09 and this will be equal to 4.5 so r will be equal to 4.5 now everything is fine question number 3a part the diagram shows a solid cone solid cone is given the radius is 8 slant height is 17 centimeters calculate the curved surface area so a is equal to pi rl a is equal to formula is given so pi into radius which is 8 and l slanting height which is 17 just will be calculating this one so this pi this one pi multiply by 8 multiply by 17 and this is equal to uh, 4 27 427.26 so we can write here 427 centimeter square calculate the volume of the cone volume formula is also given 1 by 3 pi r square h but h we don't have this h means perpendicular height so we have other two sides this is 90 degree this right angle triangle we can use to find the perpendicular which is uh, by Pythagoras theorem so we can um, find this h how we'll find this h this will be a basically we can write uh, this side square 17 square is equal to h square plus 8 square so h square will be equal to 17 square minus 8 square so h will be equal to 17 square minus 8 square under root and if we apply under root and 17 square minus 8 square this will be equal to 15 so h value is 15 it means this drawing is 15 i will move page a little above so we got this uh, h value now we can apply this formula which is v is equal to 1 by 3 pi 
and r square mean 8 square and 15 8 square into 15 and this will be um, 1 divided by 3 into pi which is this one into 8 squared multiply by 15 and this is equal to uh, 1005.3 1005.3 this will be the volume So we'll write the answer at the proper location 1005.3 and hopefully you understood each and everything. The cone is made of wood and one centimeter cube of wood has the mass of this one. So we'll multiply this uh, 1005.3 multiply by 0 0.8 and this will be equal to uh, this number we can multiply by 0 0.8 which is equal to um, 804.24 804.2 so we can write 804 grams the cone is placed in a box the total mass of the cone and the box is 1.2 kg calculate the mass of the box so mass of the box will be this one we can convert into grams because this is in grams so 1200 grams minus 804.24 grams so this will be equal to uh, 1200 minus answer will be equal to 395.75 395.75 so we can write it as 396 grams unit is already mentioned now b part this is a, a cylinder with the radius 3r and the height is 8r and this uh, sphere with the radius r the diagram shows solid cylinder and solid sphere and these are the radii then sphere of radius this okay radius and height find the value the volume of the sphere as a fraction of the volume of the cylinder give your answer in the lowest term so cylinder for cylinder what we can do volume will be equal to pi r square into h for this one so this will be equal to pi into r square mean 3 r which is the radius 3 r squared into h which is 8 r so 8 r like this one then this will be what 8 3 3 is a 9 9 8 is a 72 so 72 pi r cubed this will be volume of cylinder now in for sphere for sphere volume will be equal to which is given 4 by 3 pi r cube r cube as it is right now we have to write uh, this uh, as a fraction of this so this over this 4 by 3 pi r cube divided by 72 pi r cube so these will be cancelled and what of the rest of the thing we can do is we can uh, pull this one down 4 over 3 into 72 and we can simplify this 4 divided by 3 into 72 and this will be equal to 1 over 54 so our answer will be 1 over 54 second part the surface area of sphere is 81 pi this is the surface area find the curved surface area of the cylinder uh, give your answer in terms of pi so what we can do we can apply formula this will be 
eighty one pi is surface area of the sphere. So we can write eighty one pi is equal to what? Eighty one pi is equal to four pi r square. Four pi r square. Now we can find value of r square, which is equal to eighty one pi over four pi. Pi will be cancelled, and eighty one over four will be nine by two. Basically, nine by two square. So we can remove square. R will be equal to nine by two. Now this is the value of R, which we can apply in surface area. So surface area will be equal to in case of cylinder, two pi R. 2 pi r will be the uh, perimeter of the circle, which is the base is circle of the cylinder. So this will be multiplied by h. So this will be equal to 2 pi, and r value is r value is basically will be taking 3 r. In this case, this will be 3 r because uh, cylinder. See the this is 3 r radius. So we will replace r by 3r and h is 8r so we will write here 8r so this will be um, multiply r value we can replace 9 by 2 2 pi into 3 into 9 by 2 and 8 into uh, also 8r basically r will be 9 by 2 we can write like this so if we mult if we cancel this 4 or even you can use calculator for this whole calculation 2 multiply by pi and multiply by a 3 into 9 divided by 9 divided by 2 And multiply by eight, multiply by nine, again divided by two. So this will be equal to um, three zero. Yeah, this is three zero five three point six two. But they are saying in question that we need give your answer in terms of pi. So what I will do, I will remove pi from here so that we'll get. Answer in terms of pi. So this rest of the calculation will be resulting into nine seventy two. So will our answer will be nine seventy two pi. So we'll write here answer at the proper location nine seventy two pi. Question number four. Equation is given f of x is equal to x square over four. Minus four over x with the condition x is not equal to zero. Complete the table. The table of uh, values is given. So table of values for first value I will replace and the second value you can okay. So this will be two. Two will replace here. So it will be two squared and divided by four minus four o oh, mine wait over here. Minus four over um, x, which is two. So I will write here two. So this will be equal to minus one. So we'll write here minus one. For this one, we can replace four. So this value will replace four, and also this value we will replace as uh, as four. So this one will be. Four squared. Okay. Now this will be three, so we can write here three. So these are two missing values which we found. This is two mark question. Next B part, the graph. This portion basically they have drawn for us, and uh, we have to draw from minus. Uh, on the same grid, draw the graph of y is equal to f of x. We have to plot these values. So we can plot these values: zero point five and minus seven point nine. Zero point five will be in the middle over here, and minus seven point nine 
वी कैन चेक सेव माइनस सेवन दिस इज एट सो सेवन पॉइंट नाइन वी कैन टेक ओवर हेयर so i i'll put cross over here then next value is 1 and minus 3.8 1 and minus 3.8 so this value this one and the third one is 2 and minus 1 2 and minus 1 over here and then comes uh, 3 and 0.9 3 and 0.9 we can take over here then comes next point is 4 and 3 4 and 3 will be this point and next point is 5 and 5.5 5.5 will be this one then comes 6 and 8.3 6 6 and 8 is this one 8.3 will be over here okay so these are the points now we have to draw the smooth curve like this one from here to this one then this and okay so this will be the curve which we have plotted so this is done next part by drawing a suitable tangent by drawing a suitable tangent estimate the gradient of the graph y is equal to this one at point minus 4 and 5 so at point minus 4 and 5 we have to draw the gradient of the curve we'll check minus um 4 and 5 minus 4 is this one and 5 will be over here so this is the point basically and we have to draw the gradient and we will be checking and drawing the gradient like this one and now we can take this value we can make a triangle like this one and over here like this so this will be the triangle which we have shown and we can erase this even keeping this is also not an issue but now rise over run this is 2 and this is 8 point um 8 point we can take it as 1 2 and 8 point 4 so we can take it as from here this is 2 right so 2 minus 8 minus 2 will be 6 so 6 point this side will be 6 point 4 and this side will be Uh, one unit, two unit, three unit, and three point three point eight. So minus gradient because going down. So minus this will be three point eight. So we can calculate this. This will be minus six point four, and divided by three point eight will be equal to uh, minus one point six eight. This is equal to minus one point six eight, or we can write one point seven. So we can write here the working also. This working we can copy over here. This is uh, minus six point four over three point eight. This will be equal to minus one point six eight, and answer we can write one minus one point seven. D part G. 
is equal to 9 over x. They have given this table of values. We'll have to find, we'll be replacing this minus 3 and we'll get minus, uh, we'll get minus 3 for this one. And if we replace 3, we will get 3. So this will be 3. This will be the table of values. Now they are saying on the same grid, draw the graph of y is equal to g of x and from minus 4 to 1 and 1 to 4. So your graph, okay, so we will be drawing these values. Basically, this will be drawn over here. First table of values i will be moving a little above so that you can see this so still to move further so first point is minus 4 and minus 2.3 minus 4 and minus 2.3 so minus 4 and minus 2.3 2.3 will be here so we can mark over here i will show you this one so 2.3 will be this one then uh, next point is basically minus 3 minus 3 and minus 3 so minus 3 and minus 3 will be this point next point is minus 2 and minus 4.5 minus 2 and minus 4.5 will be over here next point is minus 1 and minus 9 minus 1 and minus 9 over here and that's all this side is done so we can draw this uh, side curve like this one, smoother curve and we can join with this. So this is done. Now the this other side which is uh, um, this one, 1 and 9. 1 and 9 so 1 is this one and it's basically 1 and 9 so okay let us start plotting this one 1 and 9 so 1 and 9 will be 1 and 9 will be over here next point is 2 and 2.5 so 2 and 2.5 will be in the over here then 3 and 3 so 3 and 3 no this one is 3 is over here we have done mistake i think so for this second point is 2 and 4.5 not 2.5 so this is 4.5 4.5 will be over here and for uh, 3 it is 3 so 3 and 3 this one and last point is what last point is 4 and 2.3 so 4 and 2.3 will be over here now we have to draw smoother curve like this smooth curve like this one and passing through this point as well okay so this is done next next thing they are asking is use your graph to find the value of x when f of x is equal to g of x so this value they are asking for where two graphs are intersecting at each other and this value will be what this value will be over here so 3 point 
थ्री पॉइंट टू फोर सिक्स एंड वी कैन से थ्री पॉइंट सेवन सो वी कैन राइट हेयर थ्री पॉइंट सेवन सो थ्री पॉइंट सेवन इज द पॉइंट ऑफ इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ दीज टू curves which we have mentioned over there write down an inequality to show positive values of x for which f of x is greater than g of x so f of x is greater than g of x this is basically g of x which we have drawn this so f of x is greater than g of x for more than when when x is greater than 4 so this is going down and this is going up so this will be x is greater than 4 will be answer for this now the exact answer to part f um, one is this one Three, cube root of k use algebra to find the value of k so we can write um, part f is this one so f of x is equal to g of x so f of x is, is what x square over 4 minus 4 over x this is equal to 9 over x we, algebraically we have to solve this and find value of uh, this one k so what we will do we can um, shift this x to this side so it will be x square by 4 basically i'll have to move the page sorry i forgot this one this is the Uh, value uh, f uh, f of x is equal to g of x we have written and algebraically we will be solving and we are trying to move this to the other side so x square minus uh, over four is equal to nine over x plus four over x which is equal to thirteen over x now this and this we can cross multiply this will be x cube is equal to thirteen into four which is fifty two so x will be equal to cube root of Fifty-two and cube root of fifty-two is what? Um, basically, they are form writing this in form of cube root. So k is in under this uh, root, so it will be fifty-two will be value of k. Now question number five, a part of factory recycles metal. The mass x tons of the metal is measured each week. the table shows the results for 52 weeks and they are asking to calculate the estimate of the mean and mean value we know f sigma fx over sigma f this is the formula which we will be applying we will be taking the mid values of this one so we will be taking 150 which is mid value of these two 150 similarly we will be taking mid values of these multiply by 8 Plus this will be two twenty five mid value twenty two twenty five multiply by twenty plus this will be two seventy five multiply by twelve plus this will be four hundred and multiply by twelve so this will be divided by the uh, total number which is fifty two and if we calculate this. This will be one fifty. Basically, we'll have to put bracket first, or uh, we'll have to take basically fraction then bracket then one fifty, and multiply by eight plus two twenty five multiply by twenty. Um, I forgot to put bracket. So over here. and over here as well then we will be this is 225 multiply by 20 plus uh, next will be 275 multiply by 12 and next number is 400 400 and multiply by 12 And divided by fifty-two, and this is equal to two sixty-five. Uh, this is equal to two sixty-five point three eight. 
so we can write answer as 265 this one uh, second part on the grid draw a histogram to show the information in the table so histogram we have to show to calculate the height of the histogram so what we will do we will divide this this number this number with class width and class width is 100 in this case so 8 divided by 100 so we will write 8 divided by 100 this will be equal to 0 0.08 so 0 0.08 will be from 100 to 200 so 100 to 200 is this one 0 0.08 will be 1 2 3 4 small boxes so up to this one i will draw so that you can see this 100 to 200 and 1 2 3 and 4 boxes and we can join this one so this is the histogram for this portion and next comes uh, from 200 to 250 200 to 250 this is 250 line and we can take this one 20 divided by 50 so 20 we can write 20 divided by 50 this will be equal to 2 by 5 which is uh, 0 0.4 so we can write this as 0 0.4 and we can draw 0 0.4 is up to this mark so we can draw this like this and this will be joined for and we can draw this line as well so this will be our next histogram bar next one third one is uh, uh, 12 12 divided by this width which is 50 so we can write here 12 divided by 50 will be equal to 12 divided by 50 is equal to 0 0.24 0 0.24 and this is from 250 to 300 250 to 300 is up to this one 0 0.24 0 0.2 here 0 0.2 0 0.4 so up to this mark so we can draw this bar as well up to this and we can join with this and this one will be the bar then comes next which is uh, 12 divided by this is 200 so 12 divided by 200 will be how much 12 divided by 200 will be equal to 0 0.06 0 0.06 and this is from 200 300 to 500 300 to 500 and 0 0.06 so one two three uh, small boxes only and up to this one and this side also we'll have to close and this will be the required bar hopefully you understood these questions also and next is b part which is Another factor also recycles metal basically this is cumulative frequency curve they have given and this cumulative frequency curve uh, they are mostly asking about the median and those values. So for how many days was the mass measured? So number of days we have to check these are uh, 100 days basically the, this is the mass and these are number of days so 100 days we will write here 100. This is the easier one mark question and next part they are saying find an estimate for the median. Median you know is the middle value 100 and we can take middle value will be 50 and we can draw the diagram up to this one to take the reference basically from 
here to this one and draw this as well so our reference will be this point and this point is 50 52 54 56 so this value will be 56 and median is basically 56 which we can mention over here find an estimate of upper quartile upper quartile you know is 75th percentile 75 will be over here and from here we can um, check the reference from the cumulative frequency curve and we will be carefully drawing because neat and clean and exact values are required in this case so this one is over here so we can we can take this reference basically this is 60 so this will be 62 so we can write upper quartile as 62 now they are saying interquartile interquartile is upper quartile minus lower quartile so we have to find first the lower quartile lower quartile is basically 25th percentile and 25 will be in the middle over here and we can take the reference from the middle this will be 25th percentile and from here we can check this this is 38 so 62 minus 38 62 minus 38 will be equal to six, uh, 62 minus 38 will be equal to 24 so we can write it as 24 this will be interquartile basically this is upper quartile minus lower quartile is interquartile find the estimate of the number of days when mass was greater than 20 tons so mass is greater than 20 ton again we'll be taking a reference from 20 ton this is 20 ton reference and we'll join this and we can also join this one and this value will be 10 and this will be 12 so uh, 12 will be this one but they are saying more than more than greater than greater than 20 tons so this will be the upper value which will be taking so 100 minus 12 will be 88 so we can mention as 88 question number six um, this uh, combined triangle is given calculate angle a c b a c b is uh, this one uh, calculate angle A C B so this angle is basically required so what we will do we will uh, first uh, we can use cosine rule basically all three sides of the uh, triangle of this triangle of this shaded triangle all three sides are given so what we will do we will apply uh, this one cosine rule so this angle is required so we'll take opposite sides so 11 squared is equal to this side square which is 13 square plus this side square which is 4 squared and minus 2 into 13 into 4 and cos of this angle which is ACB right so what we will do now we will be simplifying this 11 square minus we can shift this to this side 13 square minus 4 squared is equal to minus 2 into 3 13 2 into 13 into 4 will be equal to 104 so we can write 104 cos of acb then we can calculate this as well 11 squared minus 13 squared and minus 4 squared and this is equal to minus 64 so minus 64 is equal to minus 104 cos of acb minus will be cancelled 
so we can find we can write cos of acb is equal to 64 over 104 and angle acb will be equal to cos inverse of 64 over 104 now we can calculate this cos inverse uh, cos inverse of 64 over 104 will be equal to 52.0 so this is 52 52 degrees is the exact answer so this angle is 52 degrees now this b part calculate acd a c d this angle is required this one so for this one what we can do we can um, find this angle we can find this angle by sine rule this over this divided by this over this but we don't have uh, this side so we have to calculate first this side how we can find this side we'll be using sine rule to to find this angle we'll be finding this angle off and we can use sine rule this divided by this will be equal to this divided by this so we'll be using sine rule and finding this angle then we can use uh, find this angle uh, by subtracting these two from 180 so uh, what we will write sine theta this one this one this theta for example this is theta so sine theta divided by opposite side which is 8 is equal to um, sine 80 degree which is this one so sine theta divided by 8 will be equal to sine 80 degree divided by 13 so i will write here sine 80 degree divided by 13 and theta will be equal to we can write sine theta sine theta will be equal to 8 sine 80 degree over 13 and theta will be equal to sine inverse of 8 sine 80 degree over 13 and we can calculate this this will be inverse sine of 8 sine 80 degree and divided by 13 and bracket close so this will be equal to 37.30 so this is 37.30 now this angle is 37.30 we have two angles of this triangle third angle we can find 180 minus this so this will be a 180 180 minus basically there's okay so calculation will be what calculation will be 180 minus two angles which is one is 80 and the other one is 37.30 and this will be 180 minus 80 minus 37.30 so this will be equal to 62.7 so 62.7 will be our answer which we write over here 62.7 degrees Calculate the area of the quadrilateral ABCD. Now this is area of this one. Area of this one will be area of this triangle plus area of this triangle. Basically, we'll calculate area of both triangles and just add them. So area will be equal to what? Area will be equal to 1 by 2 into area of this triangle will be this into uh, this into this sine of 52 because we have this angle so we can write 1 by 2 into 4 into 13 into sine of 52 
what we have done in this triangle we have taken this angle and sine of uh, basically we have done half of this into this and sine uh, this into this and sine of 52 and plus the other triangle which is 1 by 2 again two sides and this angle which we found which is 62.7 so we can take the this angle and these two sides so 13 into 8 and sine of 62 13 into 8 and sine of 62.7 this will be our equation to find area and what we'll do 1 divided by 2 into into 4 into 13 and sine of 52 will be added to 1 by 2 1 over 2 into 13 and again into 8 and sine of uh, 62.7 and this will be equal to 66.69 66.69 so we can write 66.7 centimeter square unit is already mentioned so this question is over we can go through the next question which is probability question question number seven bag a contains three black balls and two white balls Bag B contains one black ball and three white balls. Three white balls. A ball is taken at random from each bag. Show that a black ball is more likely to be taken from bag A than bag B. So if probability of black will be equal to what? 3 out of 5. So, we'll write 3 out of 5. And probability of uh, mm, this one, this is basically probability of black in bag A. This is in case of A and this is in case of B. This will be probability of black will be what? Will be equal to 1 out of 4. So, this 3 by 5 we know is greater than 1 by 4. So this is shown. Second part is find the probability that the two balls have different colors. Different colors can be black and white. So probability for black is what? Probability for black in this one is 3 by 5. And probability for white is um, next will be what? So for this one, black from here and white from this second bag. So what we will be doing, we will be calculating probability of black from here and white from here. So black is 3 by 5 and white will be 3 by 4. And we will multiply. This can be option. And second option, we can get white from here, which is 2 by 5. And black from here, which is 1 by 4. So we, we can take this option as well. So this is white and this is black. Now we, we can solve this. This will be 9 over 20 plus this will be 2 over 20. So it means 11 by 20. So answer will be 11 by 20. B part, the, ball, the balls are returned to their original bags. Three balls are taken at random from the ball from the bag A without replacement. So find the probability that they are all black. So black are three. So this probability will be three by five. And next ball one is taken out without replacement. So remaining will be two out of four because total is also one less. And third one will be 1 out of 3. And this probability we can calculate. This will be 2 into 3. Into, this will be 6. 4. Uh, 5 into 4 will be 20. 20 into 3 will be 60. So 6 over 60 will be our answer. 6 over 60. They are all white. So 
all white will be zero because three cannot be drawn. There are two white balls in bag one, bag A. Sorry, the bag the balls are returned to their original bags. The ball is taken at random from bag A and its color is recorded. This ball is then placed in bag B. So you have taken ball from bag A and you are putting in bag B. The ball is then taken at random from bag B. Find the probability that the ball taken from bag B has a different color to the ball taken from bag A. So 3 by 5 will be probability of of uh, getting black from bag A and when we put this one in the in the second one white will be probability of 3 by 5 so it will be this one and the second situation can be that it is white ball so white ball probability in bag A is 2 by 5 and now it, this will be uh, next will be 1 by 5 which is uh, from black from bag B so this will be this is basically probability of black from bag A and this is white from A so I will write here black from bag A and this is white from bag B and this is basically white from bag A and this is black from bag B. So I have written these things for your understanding. This is not required in, on, in exam. So we can simplify this. This will be 9 over 25. I will move page a little above over here okay 9 over 25 and plus this will be 2 over 25 so this will be equal to 11 over 25 so our answer will be 11 over 25 now question number 8 uh, it's uh, basically two right angle triangles and similar triangles uh, in the diagram a b and c d are parallel these two are parallel a, D and B, C intersect at right angles at the point X. A, B is equal to 10 centimeter and C, D is equal to 5 centimeter. A, X, A, X is equal to 8 centimeter and this is equal to 6 centimeter. Use similar triangles to calculate D, X and D, X is this side. So we can use the ratio and ratio is what the ratio is uh, this one this is uh, hypotenuse and hypotenuse ratio will be 10 divided by 5 will be 2 so this will be k value and this k value we can utilize and this side will be similar to this side so 8 divided by 2 will be equal to 4 so our answer will be 4 we can write this as dx. Calculate angle XAB. XAB. This angle basically required. So it's right angle triangle. We can take this one as opposite opposite over. You can take opposite over hypotenuse or even any side you can take. So we are taking opposite over hypotenuse which is sin theta so sin this is for example theta so sin theta will be equal to um, xb over ab which is equal to 6 over 10 and theta will be equal to sin inverse of 6 over 10 so 6 over 10 we can calculate sin inverse of sine inverse of 6 over 10 this will be equal to 36.86 36.86 which is 36.9 degrees
B part, uh, PQRS and T lies on the circle, center is O, angle PST is 75, this one, and angle QTS is uh, 85, this one. So find the values of uh, all these values we have to write over here. So what we can do, these two angles are given, we can find third angle, 85 plus 75 will be equal to this one. So this will be 20 and this one will be 160 we can write here. And basically we can use this one, this is 20 and this is 160 and we can calculate see this one if we see this arc this arc is starting from here up to center and p and the second arc is t to s and p so this angle will be half of this angle our V will be double of 75 and double of 75 is 150 degree. So V will be 150. I will write here 150 degree as V. Hopefully you understood this. And angle at a center is double than angle at the circumference. This is the rule which we have applied. Then W is, w is this angle. So W, X, Y we have to find. Now we, if... Uh, what we can do we can use which angle we can find uh, this is basically also 20 because this is 20 this is 20 or 160 and this is 20 so we can write this angle as 20 this angle is 20 degrees so this is 20 this if in this smaller triangle this one angle is 20 other angle is 150 so these two angles are uh, 170 so this will be remaining angle will be 10 so this will be y is equal to 10 i will be uh, filling at proper place here this will be 10 degrees now we are done with this 10 degrees our remaining is W and X so W and X we can find now to find W and X what we'll be doing we'll be just doing a construction I'm explaining that construction so we can join uh, this P and Q we can join with dotted line like this one we can join like this so if you if you see I'll move like this uh, so okay so before moving this is basically this is the diameter TQ and this is the triangle which is in the semicircle so this angle will be 90 degree because triangle in a semicircle is right angle triangle so this will be 90 degree if this is 90 degree then we can see this angle like one is starting from t to s and p and the second angle is t to q and p so both are starting from t and p and going to the circumference and coming back to p so this is 75 this angle will also be 75 degrees hopefully you understand this I'll be preparing basically separate video for circle theorems also so that you can clear I, I, everything will be explained in detail. So soon you will be getting that video as well. So subscribe the channel so that you can get intimation for that one. So this is 75. This is 90 degrees. So third angle we can calculate which is 15. 75 plus 15 will be 90. So this will be. 90 75 and 15 now if this angle is 15 starting from p to t and q so p to r and q will also be 15 so x and w both are 15 so we can write over here 15 degrees and 15 degrees 
Now the question is, two containers are mathematically similar. The surface area of larger container, surface area of larger container is 226 centimeter square and the surface area of the smaller container is 94 centimeter square. So these are the areas given for two um, containers. Volume of the larger container is this one. Find the volume of smaller container. So area ratio is given. We can check area ratio which is will be equal to k square. So which is uh, 226 over 94 and we can write it as like k will be equal to 226 over 94 uh, square root. So we can write here square root of uh, 226 and 94 this will be equal to in decimal also we can take 1.55 or what we can uh, okay so we can use this number 1.55 this is equal to 1.55 now uh, for volume we require we don't require k or k square for volume we require k cube so we'll convert this one we'll take cube of this so this will be equal to 1.55 cube which is equal to we'll take cube of this one so answer raised to power 3 will be equal to 3.7 3.7279 so this is the value which we have taken in the form of cube and this is the larger container we have to get the smaller container so 680 over uh, 3.7279 this is the whole number which I am using calculator numbers so 680 divided by answer will be equal to 182 182.40 so our answer will be 182.4 this is done then comes next question number nine i'll move page a little so that i can properly place it over here so this is uh, this one functions question number nine is functions question and f of x is given g of x h of x all three values are given f of g uh, basically find g of 1 by 2 so in this one we will replace 1 by 2 this will be equal to 2 into 1 by 2 minus 1 so this will be gone 1 minus 1 will be equal to 0 so our answer for this part will be 0 then we have to find f of h of minus 1 so first we will find h of minus 1 and h of minus 1 will be equal to h of minus 1 will be equal to 3 raised to minus 1 which is equal to 1 by 3 now f of 1 by 3 will be equal to what we replace here 3 into 1 by 3 plus 4 this is gone so this will be equal to 5 so we write answer as 5 next part find g inverse of x g of x is given which is uh, y is equal to we can write 2x minus 1 we'll shift 1 to this side y minus 1 is equal to 2x so x will be equal to y minus 1 by 2 and swap x and y so y will be equal to x minus 1 over 2 our answer will be x minus 1 over 2 basically we have done mistake when we send minus 1 to this side it will not be minus it will be plus over here this will also be plus and this one will be plus and this one also will be plus <clears throat> d part find f of f of x in its simplest form in its simplest form so we will find f of x first so f of x is uh, 3x plus 4 so we'll find f of 3x plus 4 and we will replace 3 into x will be replaced by 3x plus 4 plus 4 so this will be 9x plus 36 plus 4 so this will be equal to um, 
basically 9x plus not 36 this should be 12 so I will raise this one instead of 36 we can write here 12 so 12 this will be 16 so it will be 9x plus 16 Next e part f of x square in the form of this one. So 3x plus 4 squared will be equal to a squared which is 9x squared plus b squared which is 16 plus 2ab which is 6 into 4 will be 24. Uh, so it will be 24x. So we can write it in this format or even we can write 9x square plus 24x plus 16. I'll have to move the page also here. Then comes f of x and h inverse of x is equal to f of x. Uh, find x we, when h inverse of x is equal to g of 2 and h inverse of x we have not yet found so we what we will do we will write here um, g of 2 <clears throat> h of h inverse of x is equal to g of 2 and g of 2 is g of 2 is what So we can uh, basically g of 2 will be equal to what? g of 2 will be equal to 2 into 2 minus 1 which is 4 minus 1 and 3. So h of x, h inverse of x is equal to 3 and we can shift h inverse to other side. So x will be equal to h of 3 and h of 3 we can find we can write 3 raised to our 3 which is equal to 27 so our answer will be 27 next next part will be next part will be the next question is question number 10 find the next number basically this is a sequence question and we have to write down the next uh, sequence this uh, term 3 4 5 6 7 next will be 8 and this is 5 7 9 11 13 and this will be 15 so 8 over 15 will be next term then nth term this is basically we are uh, add this is this we can write n plus 2 n plus 2 1 2 3 4 4 plus 2 will be 6 so n plus 2 over this will be denominator will be 5 7 9 so difference will be 2 we can write 2 into n plus 3 this will be 5 so if we replace n is equal to 1 we will get 5 if n is equal to 2 we will get 7 so this will be 2 n plus 3 this will be the formula next is find the nth term of each sequence nth term of each sequence if we check the difference between these two is minus 2 this one also minus 2 minus 2 and minus 2 so nth term will be minus 2n and if we replace n is equal to 1 this will be minus 2 but we require minus 1 so we'll add 1 and this formula is working for uh, all if we check 1 2 3 4 5 so this will be minus 2 into 5 will be 10 10 minus well, plus 1 will be minus 9 so this is working minus 2 and plus 1 and next uh, second part is 2 um, 2 9 28 if we check the difference between these two is 7 basically plus 7 and this will be 28 28 minus 9 will be equal to 19 similarly 65 minus 28 will be equal to 37 and 126 minus 65 is equal to 61 
this is 61 first order difference is not same so we'll go through the second order difference 19 minus 7 is 12 and 37 minus 19 37 minus 19 is equal to 18 and 61 61 minus 37 will be equal to 24 so we can write here 24 second order difference is also not the same so we'll go for the third order difference and I'll move the page also a little above over here. So 18 minus 12 will be 6. 24 minus 18 is also 6. So third order difference is same. It means that this is involving n cube. So if I write n cube for n is equal to 1, this is 1. But we need 2. So we'll add here 1. So we will check, for example, 1, 2 for second, this will be 2 cube, which is 8 plus 1, 9. So it's working. So we can check for the other terms also. It's working for all. So n3 plus 1. Hopefully you understood each and everything. This was the last question of this paper. And I'll be waiting for your comments and hope you will be uh, subscribing the channel Maths TV if you have not yet done and also press uh, bell icon button so that you will be getting intimation for the incoming videos and don't forget to recommend this channel to your teacher and your friend basically you will be suggesting your teacher and your friends and thank you very much for watching take care bye